Okay. Um, once you've got everything you need for today's class, come to into Virasana hero pose. Sit on your heels. If your hips are too far away from your hips, you can stack a block or some books between your heels so you can sit on it just for some support. Your hands on your knees, on your thighs. Relax your shoulders and cast your gaze down to the in front of you and slowly close your eyes. Just easily breathe in and out. And we all come from a busy Thursday. So um, if that's still something that on your mind that preventing you from focusing on your practice today, imagine that you're walking into a room that has a shelf right next by the door and you can put all the thoughts on the shelf, assuring yourself that they're still going to be there if you go back to look for them after the practice. Notice some part of your body that probably um, give you the most sensation when you breathe in and out. Could be the tip of your nose. You might feel a switch between cold and warm. And you take a breath through your nose. Feel the rise of your chest, your collarbones each time when you breathe in. And exhale as I'm gently fall back down. Perhaps you start shifting your attention to your low belly. You can even create a little basket with your hands that in front of your belly button. With inhale, rise your belly into your hands. And exhale, draw your belly away. And oftentimes we tend to have a shorter exhalation compared to inhalation due to various reasons. One of the most um, common one is we're all afraid of letting things go and exhalation just represent letting things go. But it also has a benefit of pacifying our nervous systems. That's why when we're nervous, anxious, oftentimes taking a big deep breath with a long exhale helps with that. And to go further in the direction we will practice um, some of it today, some in um, Sanskrit means same. And vritti means fracturation. So it'll be same equal length, inhale and exhale. And we'll start with the count of four. 
take an inhale for two, three, four, exhale for two, three, four, inhale for two, three, four, and exhale, two, three, four. A couple more rounds on your own. And up of, a couple of options here. You can start slowly increase your count to six or eight or even 10 if that's available to you. But do make sure that you're increasing it to the count that you still can reach to that count with your exhalation. If your exhale does not last that long, try to stay wherever you are. And if holding the breath does not um, give you anxiety or other negative feelings, you can add same length of pause in between. Which gives us a better chance to be close to that space that in between. that we're usually quickly passing by. And count up to this round, finish two more rounds on your own. When you finish with the next round of exhale. Release the hands by the side. You can just shake your shoulders and do some sh shoulders shrug and rotate, especially if you tend to sit in front of the computer for a long time for your work. Option to slowly blink open your eyes. We'll continue some of the breathing qualities and start tracing our arms to the side, like drawing a full moon. And all the way up and match the length of exhalation and slowly lower your arms back down close to you. Inhale, raise the arms up. Match the pace of the movement with the pace of your breath. Slow is control. And next time, bring your arm forward and all the way up by your ears. And exhale, lower it all the way down. And perhaps stretch it towards the back of you a little bit. Inhale, raise the arms up. And exhale, lower them down.
If you notice you are rushing through the breath. See if you can add that count back to your breathing to guide you to slow it down. So you can be a little bit more specific with your own breath. Last round, when your arms to the back, clasp your hands with your left pinky outside and stretch the claps to the back, um, toward the ground, which is gonna lift your chest up toward the sky. One more big inhale. And exhale, release the arms. Bend your right elbow and catch your right elbow with your left hand and side bend to the left. You're bending toward the ground to the left side, but still keep your right elbow and your right side body lifting up toward the sky. In the meantime, push your right sit bone into the block or the books or the mat beneath you. So the right side body is getting lengthened. And come back to center, we'll switch side, bend your left elbow, catch your left elbow with the right hand, and side bend to the right. Press into the left sit bone, so prevent it from being lift up. Lift all the left side body toward the sky. And come back to center. Bring your hands down. We'll meet in table pose, Parmanasana. Hands right underneath your shoulders. The knees under your hips. Pushing to the hands. Spread your fingertips. Inhale. Pull your chest forward. Lift your tailbone up. Drop your belly. And exhale. Round. Drop your back into cat pose. Inhale into cow and exhale, round drop your back. Same as the full moon that we were drawing when we were sit sitting in heel pose. Same thing here, move with the pace of your breath instead of the other way around. Once you're back to neutral, step your left foot back and rock back and forth so we to wake up the left hand strings. You can add a um, blanket underneath your right knee for some padding. If you do not have it nearby, you can fold your mat, especially if you have a thin mat. and lift the left leg up, point your left toes. Feel the back of the body being lengthened. And the exhale, pull your left, keep everything else stay the same, but pull the left heel toward the left sit bone. And now we extend it. And exhale, pull the left heel in. Imagine that you are squeezing a tennis ball in the back of your left knee. Be that specific. Engage your left glutes, left hamstrings. One more time, pull your left heel in. And this time, keep it tucked in. Tuck your right toes. And extend your right leg into a down dog split, but with your left leg bent. 
and how reach the left knee toward the sky. And exhale, draw the left knee into the chest and step it in between your hands. Lower down your right knee. Inhale, raise your arms up into low lunge. And we'll switch side of the leg. And this time, inhale, pull your right heel into your right sit bone. You can release the hands on the top of the left leg for support if you like to. And exhale slowly with control. Let your right leg down. It might be a good idea to add some padding here since we are putting more weight onto that knee. And exhale, release it. Same thing, imagine there's a tennis ball being squeezed behind your right knee. Keep hugging both thigh bones towards the midline. So your pelvis is evenly facing forward. Last time, pull it in. Option to reach back with your right hand. And bring a little bit closer if you look like to. Slowly release it. Find the blocks if you have them. And pin your left hip towards the back, straighten your left leg. Ardha Hanumanasana, half split. Pull your left toes towards you, flex your left foot. You can even add your right hand to pull those toes towards your face. Just gonna give you a nice stretch of your left calf. And fold over the left leg. Inhale, pull back forward into low lunge. And exhale, tap your right knee behind your left knee and step it between, um, beside your left foot. Fold over the legs, Uttanasana. Inhale, lengthen the spine. Auto Uttanasana, shooting out you're the crown of the head. And exhale, fold over the legs. And rise all the way up. And exhale, bend your right elbow and catch your right elbow with the left hand and side bend to the left side. Inhale, all the way up. And exhale, bend your left elbow, side bend to the right. Come back to center. And exhale, fold over the legs. Inhale, lengthen the spine, auto tanasana. Next, uh, step left and right back into a high plank. If you have wrist injuries, feel free to release your knees down or you come down to your elbows, come into a forearm plank. Pull your navel towards your spine. Take a big inhale, reaching the crown to the board. Option, drop your knees down if you haven't done so. And bend through your elbows, hugging your elbows towards the center and lower all the way down to your belly. Extend your arms long, thumbs facing out, palms facing down. Press into the palms, inhale, lift your chest up, half load locust. And exhale, release down. One more time like that. Inhale, lift the chest up. Perhaps this time, lift your palms up. Lift your feet up as well. Shalabhasana, locust pose. Reaching your fingertips toward the back. And exhale, release down. Bring the hands by the chest, hugging the elbows towards each other. Pushing through a high plank or table and push your hips toward the sky into down dog. Adha Mukha Shonasana. 
if this is the first down dog of the day, take your time to invite some flexibility into the back of the legs by bending into one leg and another. It's perfectly fine if your heels are not on the ground, mine are not either. And for some people, it will never be that way. The postures only serve as a container here for our mind practice. When you find the stillness in the down docks, rock forward into a high plank. Release the knees down, adjust your hands, your knees into a table pose again. And we'll switch sides. Extend the right leg long. Rock back and forth. Lift the back with the right leg towards the sky. Inhale, lift the right leg all the way up to the hip height. Point your right toes, reaching it long away from you. And exhale, pull the right heel into the right sit bone. Inhale, re-extend. And exhale. Bend the right leg in a couple more times on your own. Squeeze that tennis ball that behind that right knee. Next time when you the right leg, bend in, keep it there and tug your left toes and straighten your left leg and lift your hips up, lift your right knee towards the sky, down dog split. And exhale, draw your right knee into the chest and step it between the hands, lower your left knee down. Find some padding if you like to. Climb the hands on the top of the right thighs and also bring them by your ears into a more traditional Anjanasana, low lunge. Get comfortable here first, hugging your thigh bones towards the midline so you have a stable foundation. And if you like to open the front of your left leg a little bit more so you can, you can move your left knee a little bit back uh, towards the back. One big inhale. And exhale, let everything go. Next exhale, pull the left heel into your left foot bone. And now slowly release it down with control. Next exhale, pull it in. Keep hugging both thigh bones towards the midline. Engage your core to keep you lifted. Last time when it's up, option to extend your left foot, left hand towards the back and grab the left foot that has put it closer to your left hip. If you have the bind, slowly release it. Hands down on the blocks or on the ground. Pull the chest forward. And exhale, pin your right hip toward the back, straighten your right leg, flex your right foot. Option to use your left hand to pull the right toes towards you. Ardha Hanumanasana. Keep a little bit micro bend in your right leg, if you, especially if you tend to walk and run a lot, which gives you really tight hamstrings.
in yoga we care more about connection which is going to grow into capacity someday so we're not hoping to fix the tight hamstrings in just one posture and pull your chest forward and tap the left knee behind the right and step the left foot down fold over the legs with nasana inhale lengthen the spine exhale fold over the legs rise all the way up Next up, bend your right elbow. You can catch the right elbow with the left hand. You can also extend your left arm out and flip your left palm and bring the left hand onto the back as well. Oh, and stop walk the hands back towards each other. They may or may not touch each other or grab each other. Just like any other postures, it's not the purpose of today's practice. So it's fine if you cannot create a bind on the back. Release the hands if you have the bind. And bend the left elbow. And catch the left elbow with the right hand. Same thing, you can stay here, perfectly fine. And even close your eyes. or extend your right arm out, flip your right palm, and walk the right hand toward the left hand. Press into the feet. Remembering the feeling of the pushing your the soles of feet into the ground, which is going to come into play in the following sequence. Remember that kind of connection. And that kind of pushing is going to create engagement of the front of your legs as well, which is going to create a lift of slight lift of your knees towards your pelvis. Engage of your quads. And release the arms, you have to bind. We'll float through some sun sortation B today. If you have any other salute that you'd like to into, include in your practice, please go for it. Otherwise, inhale, sit into it, Kanasana, chair pose. And exhale, fold over the legs. Inhale, lengthen the spine. We we'll go slowly for the first round. And exhale, step left and right. High plank. Take a big inhale. And exhale, knees up or down. Bend to your elbows. And come all the way down to your belly into the inhale. Lift your chest up into a Bhujangasana, baby cobra. You can also extend the arms straight. Come into Urdhva Mukhasranasana, upward facing dog. Now exhale, push your hips all the way up into a down dog. Step your left foot into the left hand. Spin down your right foot. The right foot is about 45 or 60 degrees away for the right upper corner. And bend into the left leg. Arms up. You might have to turn a little bit because your right leg direction, so you might your pelvis is facing slightly to the right side. Turn your pelvis facing forward. And arms up by the ears, warrior one. Press into the pinky edge of the right foot. Just like when we were just standing in Tadasana, pushing to the soles of the feet. Next, your hands down, step the left foot back. Knees up or down, move through the vinyasa. You can also just skip this, push directly into down dog. You can also move through some cow and cat. And step the right foot to the right hand. 
spin down your left foot, arms up by the ears, press into the pinky edge of the left foot, and turn your pelvis facing forward. Next, your hands down, step the right foot back, move through the vinyasa. Exhale, we meet in down dog. Three to five rounds of breath here. See what we, you can do in this pause to make your practice more specific to you, to yourself. Maybe that means a bit more focus on the back of the legs, bottom of the feet, mobility of your shoulders. It's all those specific small parts that create your practice, create a whole flow. Bottom of the next exhale, step by step, hop forward. Inhale, lengthen the spine. Exhale, fold over the legs. Inhale, sit into chair. Lower the hips down. And exhale, come all the way up. Hands to your heart center. Sit into chair. And exhale, fold over the legs. Inhale, lengthen the spine. Exhale, step right and left. Take a big inhale to the crown of the head. Exhale, move to the vinyasa. Inhale, pull into back bend of your choice. Exhale, lift tailbones up. Atta Mukha Shonasana. Step the left foot to the left hand. Spin down your right foot. Inhale, arms up, bend into the left leg. Press into the right pinky. And hands down, step the left foot back into high plank, bend to your elbows. Inhale, pull into back bend of your choice. Now exhale, down dog. Step the right foot to the right hand, spin down your left foot, arms all the way up. Warrior one, hands down. Step right foot back, skip off. Modify your vinyasa. And three to five rounds of breath here. And this Adhamukha Down dog. any movement and also down dog is just a, a spot that we pause for our reflection so if this does not serve the purpose you can always lower your knees down come into child pose or table pose whatever serves you that purpose in your practice Bottom of the next exhale, step by step, a hop forward. Inhale, lengthen the spine. And exhale, fold over the legs. Inhale, sit in the chair, Utkanasana, lower your hips down, arms by the ears. And exhale, all the way up. Hand to heart center, by the side. Float one more round on your own. Um, I'm gonna be quiet so you can cultivate the ownership of your own practice.
Make sure you give yourself the three to five rounds of breath time at the end of your flow. Often time we rush through things, especially in this modern society that requires us to be productive, producing so much in a short time. We have the tendency to do so. On the bottom for the next exhale, step by step, a half forward. If you're still flowing, take your time. We'll all meet at the front of the mat in Tadasana, mountain pose. If you already arrived to the front of the mat, close your eyes a little bit. See if you can re-establish that connection between the soles of your feet and the space beneath you. Is there still the connection to the specific parts that we're trying to create is it still there. Whenever you're done, slowly blink, open your eyes. You can take a half a salute or you can step by step towards the back and push directly into down dog. That's where we are going to meet. In downward facing dog, and bring the feet to the center, bring them close to each other, and lift up your left leg, and pull your left heel into your left sit bone. Lift the left knee up toward the sky and draw the left knee into the chest. Round your upper back. Inhale, keep it tucked and lift your left knee up. And exhale, draw the left knee into the chest. Last time, kick it back, but keep the left leg bent. And exhale, draw the left knee into the chest and step the left foot down in between the hands and lower your right knee down. Find the blocks if you have them. Keep hugging both thigh bones into the midline. Pull the chest forward, spread the collarbones. And exhale, tuck the back toes and straighten your right leg, straighten your left and fold over the left leg. And bend the right leg, maybe you tap the right knee into the ground. And inhale, bend into the left leg, lower right knee down, low lunge. Keep hugging both thigh bones towards the midline. And exhale, straighten both legs and bend your right leg and fold over the left. Inhale, bend into the left leg. Lower your right knee down. And exhale, lift up your right leg, straighten the left leg. And fold over the left leg, bend the right knee. Last time, come into low lunge. And release the right hand down. And left hand up, twisting to the left side. Rotate your rib cage toward the sky. Push into the right hand, but you're not pushing that right shoulder into your right ear. 
try to release your right shoulder down. So you're not losing the space of your chest. Next, your hands down. And walk your hands to the right side of the mat. Parry your feet. Fold over the legs. Focus on the connection between the soles of the feet and the mat. Let the back of the legs be open. If it's tiring to you, you can use a block or something to catch your forehead. Bring the hands to the hips and slowly rise all the way up. And turn your left foot forward, come up onto the balls of your right foot. Reach your arms toward the back. Reach the clasp of the hands with the left pinky outside. And puff the chest up. You can also spin down your right foot, come into warrior one stance, really depend on which one gives you more stability. And exhale, fold your chest to inside of the left leg. Some people would rather stay it above the left leg, but if you're going for that way, try to make sure that you're not resting your torso on the top of the left leg. Imagine that clasp of the hands is lifting yourself all the way up. Right all the way up. Bend into the legs, lower your right knee down, coming back into low lunge. From here, you can gently step by step, step right foot forward and left leg back. You can also use a, um, use a block, it's gonna give you some um, extra height. You can just uh, jump your right foot forward and lower your left knee down. Once you arrived with your right leg forward, you can step your left foot slightly in and straighten both legs. Hands on the blocks or on the ground, it depends on the hamstrings. And fold over the right leg. Inhale, lengthen the spine, which very likely you're gonna need some support underneath your hands. Shooting your spine out of, side, out of your pelvis toward the front. Exhale, fold over the right leg. Inhale, lengthen the spine. And exhale, fold over the legs. One more time. And exhale, fold over. And this time, walk the blocks of your hands toward the back of the leg. Keep the connection between the left foot and the mat. Bend into the right leg. Hands down, step your right foot back. Left hand down, and spin down your heels to the left side. Stand your right arm up into a side plank. Stack your feet together. If your left wrist is hurting, you can lower your knees down. And release the right hand down. 
can go to one more round of Winyasa. And we'll meet in downward facing dog. In down dog, bring the feet together. Lift up your right leg. Bend your right knee. Pull your right heel into your right sit bone. And exhale, draw the right knee into the chest. And now kick the right knee up again. And exhale, draw the right knee into the chest. One more time. This time we're going to draw into the front, step it between the hands, lower your left knee down, find the block with heaven. Inhale, open the chest. And exhale, tuck your left foot and straighten both legs, fold over the right leg and bend your left knee. Inhale, pull forward into a low lunge. Exhale, straighten both legs and tap the left knee down. Inhale, pull the chest forward. Exhale, come into pyramid pose and bend the left leg. Then into right leg again, release the left knee down. Release the left hand down. Extend the right arm up toward the sky. Press into the left palm and releasing that left shoulder away from the left ear. Rotate your rib cage toward the sky. Inhale, shooting out the crown of the head. And exhale, revolve the spine. And bring the right hand down, walk the hands to the left side, parallel your feet, and fold over the legs. Release the crown of the head. Maybe even release the elbows down to the ground. Whenever you're ready, bring the hands to the hips and rise all the way up. And turn your right foot forward. Come up onto the balls of your left foot. Extend your right your arms towards the back. Clasp hands with your right pinky outside this time and stretch the hands toward the ground. Pop up your chest toward the sky. You can stay in this high lunge. You can also spin down your left foot down into a warrior one stance. Next, you will fold your chest toward the front, humble warrior. slowly come all the way up. Release your left knee down. Hand on the ground on the blocks. You can choose a way that you like to, to switch between the legs. Pause in the slow lunge for a moment first. And then tuck your back toes and step your right foot slightly in. Inhale, lengthen forward. And exhale, fold over the left leg. Inhale, lengthen the spine. Exhale, fold over the left leg. 
one more time. Keep focusing on that connection between the pinky edge of the right foot and the mat. Option to stay here. You can also walk the blocks or your hands towards the back of the back foot. Bend into the left leg again. Both hands down. Step your left foot back into high plank. Keep your right hand down. Extend your left arm up into a side plank. Release the left hand down. Move to vinyasa if you like to. Or we'll directly meet in downward facing dog. Down dog, bring your feet together. Lift up your left leg. Draw your left heel into your left sit bone. We'll do this one time this round. And draw the left knee into the chest. And step your left foot in between the hands. Lower your right knee down. And pull your chest forward. You can move your right knee slightly away from your pelvis. And do a long, long, low lunge. Hands on the blocks, tuck your back toes and lift up your right knee. Push the back of the right leg toward the sky, getting really engaged. And next, release your right knee down, pull your chest forward, and lift up your right knee. And release the right knee down. Pull your chest forward. This whole flow, keep hugging both thigh bones toward the midline so they're not splitting out. You can stay like that. All next time when you lift your right knee up, pull your right knee into your left, the back of the left knee, shiva squat. You can even lose your, hand, your blocks if you have them and kick get it back and lower your right knee down. Lift up your right knee and step your right knee into the back of the left knee and step it back one more time. Release your right hand down and left arm up. This time, option to lift the back knee up in this twist. And release your left hand down, walk your hands to the right side, parallel your feet and fold over the legs. Perhaps walk the hands through the legs towards the back of you. Bring the hands to the hips and start slowly rise up and turn your left foot forward come up to the balls of your right foot collapse your hands behind you with the left pinky outside bend into your left leg you can stay in this high lunge stance you can also spin down your right foot into a warrior one And start slowly, lower your chest down. Press into the pinky edge of the right foot. Lift all the way up through the clasp of the hands. And use the hands to lift yourself all the way up. And release your right knee down. 
for your chest forward. Use whatever way you like to switch the legs. If you're doing the jump, make sure that you land it quietly. And straighten both legs, step your left foot side in into a pyramid pose stance. When you arrive in pyramid pose, you can stay in a traditional pyramid pose and fold over the right leg. You can also walk your hands or the blocks toward the back of the foot and fold over the right leg. You can also, but only if, if you decide to go for humble um, flamingo, come out of the pyramid pose and watch first. When you're folding over in the pyramid pose, shift weight into the right foot and just imagine that at the beginning of the class when we're squeezing that left heel into the left sit bone, squeeze that left foot into the left sit bone, landing all the weight into the right foot and everything else stays the same. You can also just do some pulse in between But if you like to, you can stay in this humble flamingo. I found it's easier to have my hands, my fingertips facing toward the back and stay on my fingertips. But um, it's your own practice, so do explore a little bit. And once you're done with your own Experiment, step into high plank. And release your heels toward the left side, right hand up and push your hips all the way up toward the sky. Option to stay here, option to lift your right leg up and step your right foot behind you and push your hips, your pelvis toward the sky. Wild thing. Slowly come back to center. You can go through one more round of vinyasa. You can also go straight into a downward facing dog. Once you arrive in Atomokeshwanasana, bring your feet together, lift up your right leg. Pull your right sit bone into your right foot into your right sit bone and draw the right knee into the chest. Step right foot down in between the hands. Release your back knee down. Find the block to happen. Pull the chest forward. Next, you'll lift your left knee, the back of the left knee toward the sky. And release the left knee down. Pull your chest forward and straighten the left leg. And release it down. And lift all the way up. You can continue flowing like that. You can also, once you your left knee is up, and tap your left knee behind your right knee and lightly step your back and lower it down. Once your left knee down again, step your left hand into the mat and right arm up. Option to lift your back knee up into the simple twist. Release your right hand down, walk your hands toward the left side, parallel your feet and fold over the legs.
walk the hands towards the back of you. You can stay there. And because we've been doing so much forward folding, so our hip crease is actually kind of ready for us. If you want to go for inversion from this white leg fold. Whenever you're ready to come out of whichever pose you are in, bring the hands to the hips and rise all the way up. Turn your right foot forward, come up to the balls of the left foot. Clasp your hands with your right pinky outside. Option to stay here, you can also spin down your left foot into your warrior one stance. Reaching down to the claps and reach up to the chest. And start slowly, lower your chest towards a bent knee. Got more long breath here. And start slowly lift yourself back up again. And lower your left knee down. And if you've been stepping, maybe it's, this is the last chance to try hop in between the, the legs. Once you arrived in low lunge with your left leg bent, tuck your, tuck your right toes and straighten both legs, step your right leg slightly in and fold over the left leg into a traditional pyramid pose. But if you like to try that pose between humble flamingo and traditional pyramid pose, or you, can, or you want to come into humble flamingo, walk your hands toward the back. Your hands might be on the ground or on the blocks. And you can, it's perfectly fine if you just want to fold over the leg like here. You can also start, pull your right heel into right hip bone, and extend it back. Bend into your left leg again. Hands down and step your left leg back. Right hand down and left hand up into a side plank. Chest facing towards the right and the left side. Option to lift up your left leg. Option to bend your left foot and lightly step it behind you. And push your pelvis up toward the sky wild thing. Come back to center. You can move to one more round of vinyasa. You can also come straight into Virasana hero pose. Once you arrive to hero pose, we'll do um, half camel or camel pose, but because we did not do too much of chest opening, I mean, not specifically, we did some, but not a lot. So you can stay in half camel pose by bring hands on your sacrum, fingertips pointing up and bend your elbows, hugging your elbows toward the center. Push your pelvis forward can use the help of your hands as well. Push your pelvis forward. Then lift your chest up. Your chest will be always going up. Which will naturally create that back bend. 
And if you feel like your chest is open enough, you can also release one hand onto one heel, maybe both. And if you like to do both, and but your heels are too far away, you can tuck your toes, come into Ustrasana, camel pose. Whatever version you are in, make sure you're focusing on, push your pelvic forward and push your chest up toward the sky. Use a push of the hands to help yourself come back up. And come into table, just to counterpose that a little bit. We don't want to jump into a deep forward bend directly from a deep back bend. It's a, quite a shock to our spine. So we're gonna pause here for a moment. Once you're ready, you can push yourself into down dog and also shimmy your right knee behind your right wrist and your right hand, your right foot behind your right hand. If you have a blanket or couch, couch pillow, stack it underneath your right hip for some support. Ekapara Rajokapatasana, half pigeon. You can stay up if you're still looking for more back bending. You can even raise up your arms. You can also grab the edge of your mat to create the back bend. But if you feel like you've done enough back bend today, you can also start slowly roll, lower your arms and stack your hands on top of each other and rest your forehead on the top. Listen to what your body is calling for. But if you have more surface of your body on the ground, that means you have more support. Take a couple of more long breath here. And support yourself, slowly come up if you're folding forward. Lift up your right leg and draw some big circles with the right knee so you are reopening that right hip crease that has been compressed during that half pigeon. And draw the left knee behind your left wrist, left hand behind your, or left foot behind your right hand. And bring that folded blanket or couch pillow and then it's your left hip. Same thing as here, you can also raise up your arms for a little bit deeper back then. You can also grab the long edge of the mat. You can also come down to your elbows Inspect the hands and rest the forehead on the top. Traditionally, the, this pose is more for outer hip stretch. So if you feel like you're losing that in that back bend, feel free to come all the way down on your arms which gives you more support and space to be specific about your outer hips. Once you're ready to come out, use your hand to support yourself up. 
and bend your left leg and draw some big circles with the left knee. Release your feet down and we'll flip around. Lower down to your back. Bring the heels close to your sit bones. Feet at hips distance. And lift your hips all the way up into a bridge pose. We won't be here long. We just want to open that hip crease space again, since we've been doing so much forward folding. And start slowly release your mid back, your low back, and your tailbone down. For today's Travasana, you can just support, spread out your your arms, your legs. You can also bring your, the soles of your feet together and just let your knees, let them just open into Baddha Konasana. If, if it feels awkward with just uh, knees hanging there, you can use the blocks or the books or the folded blankets to catch your knees by placing them and then you see your right thigh, your thighs. Whatever your body is calling for, for your Shavasana. And if you haven't done so, start to feel your eyelids getting heavy and even close your eyes. If you rather stay eyes open, make sure that your gaze at one point that not moving. Shavasana.
if you're not rushing to anywhere, please feel free to stay. You're ready to come out. Start working your fingertips, your toes, and gently sway your head side to side. Carefully bend in one leg and another. And roll up onto one side. Pause here for a moment so you're not rushing yourself off the mat. Use the hands to support yourself to get a comfortable seat. Keep the hands, palms facing down. And if it resonates with you, get your hand in front of your hands in prayer. One big and high. And exhale everything out. One more big inhale for by own. Oh. And bow your head towards your heart. And slowly blink open your eyes. Thank you so much for practicing with me tonight. Um, if you have any question or feedback, feel free to send me an email. Um, otherwise, I'll see you next week.